It's no secret that internal combustion engines are on their way out and electric vehicles are leading the charge to a more sustainable future. Tesla really showed the world that electric vehicles don't have to be built on compromise. They can look good, they can go the distance and they can be quick. Where every major manufacturer is coming out with their own electric vehicle and what you're looking at right here is the Audi e-tron, Audi's first fully electric vehicle. So you look at the front of the e-tron and it is very distinctly Audi. You've got the octagonal grille right at the front with the vertical slats, but you can tell it's an electric car because it's got a platinum grey finish to the grille. The headlamps too are a huge differentiating factor for Audi. Uh, the signatures are how they tell their model lines apart and for the e-tron you've got four slats under the headlamp. Again, a first for Audi. You look at the stance of the e-tron and it's very obviously SUV. Now this is a long car, 4.9 meters long, a little shorter than a Q7. From the side, you'll notice the lack of wing mirrors, which we'll come to in a bit. But from the rear, you can tell that there are very distinct Audi styling elements like the light bar that runs across the width of the car. They've obviously tried to make it look dynamic, so you've got this raked back D-pillar and the spoiler. And I must say, it looks quite neat. You'd think the e-tron was wildly outrageous from the inside, but it's not. It's actually very conventional. You've got a regular steering wheel, you've got virtual cockpit in there, you've got a touchscreen here to control your infotainment system, one down here for your climate control, you've got a gear selector here for drive, sport, reverse, neutral, pretty much like a regular car. The only thing out of the ordinary are these screens for the virtual mirrors because this doesn't have traditional glass mirrors but instead it has a camera on the outside which sends a feed to these high definition screens. So the e-tron, it's got a battery pack between the two axles. It's also got two electric motors, one on the front axle, one on the rear axle which technically makes it all-wheel drive. Audi's Quattro, it's got it. The system makes 265 kilowatts which translates to around 355 bhp and 561 nm of torque. If that's not enough, you can slot it into sport mode, floor it, and it'll make an additional 60 horsepower and 103 nm for a short 8 seconds to give you that additional boost when you need it. The e-tron is expected in India at the end of this year or at the start of the next year. Audi is looking to position it between the Q5 and the Q7. Audi will be bringing the e-tron to India under the new government scheme that allows import of 2500 cars without the need to homologate them. Being a CBU, it will be a little pricey but however because it is an EV, you will be able to avoid registration tax in a lot of states. Are electric cars as engaging to drive as conventional ones? Is this e-tron going to be as fun to drive as say a Q5? I'm not sure, only time will tell, we can tell you that once we drive it, but what I can say for sure is that as a mobility solution, as a means of getting from one point to another, electric cars are here and you don't have to make any compromises with them.